I want to start with uh, Airbnb, which of course, uh, certainly a roller coaster for them this last few weeks with the travel industry coming to a standstill. Now the Olympics getting delayed by at least a year, Airbnb, an official partner with them. This is a company that had sought a 30 some billion dollar valuation that was planning to go public this year. Just how bad is this for them? Well, um, look, we are not investors in Airbnb. Um, I would expect that Airbnb's um, challenges are similar to what you're seeing, at, like bookings or Expedia or you know Uber. You know, I was on the phone with Dara last week from Uber, uh, and he spoke to investors. You know, on Thursday, I, I suspect it is uh, extremely uh, substantial declines. Let's talk then about Uber. We interviewed Dara Khosra Shahi last week as well, and you know certainly you know they've they've been doing uh, some things uh, to help dr drivers, to help customers. But you got a lot of drivers out there who are unhappy. You got folks not leaving their houses. You know he's touting Uber being an asset light business. If their drivers don't drive, they don't have to pay them, which is sort of a double edged sword. You know how does Uber fare in this crisis? I think first you got to if, if we if we take Uber and think of it as like two separate businesses, it's, it's actually more. But let's keep it simple. Uber Eats, Uber Rides, Uber Eats. I think will do very well um, in in this in this time. If you think about each business, as each business has a supply side and a demand side. The supply side is obviously restaurants and the, and the eats. The demand side is obviously consumers. You know, I think the information was publishing uh, that you know sales were up ten plus percent. I think a huge amount of restaurants are rushing to be onboarded to Uber Eats. Um, I think this will also continue when people start to, you know, trends change. You know, in 2008, 2009, you know, Amazon took huge amounts of market share as people went, you know, off as people went from offline to online. They realized it was really easy. I think a whole older generation of people are now using Uber Eats that are going to continue to use it after the fact. Of course, people will go to restaurants still. So I think it's actually a net positive for Eats um, rides. Obviously, you can look at the credit card data, like our Yipit data, like that. You know, ride volume is down seventy to eighty percent in a lot of these major cities in the United States. It didn't go to zero. So actually, like Expedia or Bookings or somebody, like nobody would be booking a new, a new trip right now. People are still traveling around these cities um, to get to essential jobs, maybe to get to childcare, some other things like that. So some of it's happening. Um, I do think I do think as the economy is, is restrictions are lifted, people will come back. Obviously, like 15, 20 percent of the business is um, airport rides, which they've disclosed. That will obviously take a longer to come back as people take longer to start to travel. Um, but on the flip side, that's on the demand side. On the supply side, look, Uber is, you know, it is really tough for companies like Uber and Lyft to operate in a market that is um, a very tight labor market. And you could have asked companies like Walmart and McDonald's, like 2019 was brutal for these companies. Uber on the other, you know, right. in a couple months, it's going to be, you know, they're going to have a line out the door of people that want to drive for Uber. So on the supply side, I actually think it'll, it'll help them a lot. Interesting. Let's talk about Amazon. Speaking of supply and demand, you've got Amazon struggling uh, to, to meet customers' needs right now. They're trying to focus on prioritize essentials. Meantime, they have workers at these warehouses testing positive. Um, they just uh, have closed a warehouse in Kentucky indefinitely. How does Amazon fare? I think Amazon will do exceptionally well in this period. Uh, and I would not want to be an old line retailer in this period. I think that you will see fringe online retailers probably. I don't know if JCPenney's will ever open again, other than, you know, for a liquidation sale. Um, Amazon will take share in this market. They obviously have challenges too, no different than any distribution companies or logistic companies that are open right now. In these warehouses, people are working and they need people to work. Look, they are, a lot of these warehouses are automated to some degree. I mean, there's no warehouses that are fully automated from Amazon, of course. But like, I wouldn't surprise me if you, I don't know if you walk into the facilities now, if they're taking the temperature of employees, it wouldn't surprise me if they are. Um, but, you know, I think Amazon comes out of this booming. And that's what the stock market's telling you. Companies like Amazon stock is, you know, barely even down for the year. So, you know, outside of these companies we've just discussed, where do you see the biggest opportunities and, and what should you stay away from? So, look, we're software internet investors. So we tend to only focus on that. 
Um, look, I've got friends that you know know a lot about cruise lines and air, air you know, transportation companies. And I'm, I'm asking them, like, should I personally be buying these stocks? Not for my fun, but personally. And they're like, look, we wouldn't touch them right now. We don't know how long this is going to last. These, these, some of these, some of these, you know, companies have huge amounts of capital leases or you know, lots of debt that they got to service. So what we love right now is software companies, enterprise software companies. Um, and one area we really like is like security software because while the rest, while, while everybody's sheltered in place, you know, and can't travel and can't spend money, Russian hackers can still do business. Um, and so companies like Tenable Software, um, we own. Companies like CrowdStrike, we've owned in the past. Um, and the stock's, you know, up 100% since, you know, Monday. Um, but we think security software is an area where there's going to be a lot. Also, application software. Companies like Talon Systems and um, SailPoint and Workiva and Workday. These are just awesome businesses that have really sticky recurring revenues where like they may not sign as much business up over the next couple months, but like they have no risk of going bankrupt. And that's why these stocks, you know, are probably down 20 to 30% now versus some of these cruise line, you know, travel companies that are down, you know, 70 to 80 plus percent. Um, they're just very robust business models where we think that, you know, the risk adjusted return is very good. What's also interesting about these businesses are, especially like in the sub $5 billion market cap, is that there is a huge amount of private equity money raised by the folks of like Toma Bravo and Insight and Vista and Hellman and Friedman, who will be, if these stocks don't rebound with the market, they will be in there pouncing on them, you know, doing, doing buyouts. So we think like they're really interesting risk adjusted returns for investors.